to the Modern Skein podcast. My name is Sharon Graff and I am the owner of the Modern Skein, which is a yarn shop here in Montgomery, Texas. And I'm Becky, store manager at the Modern Skein. Yes, so you won't have noticed because we only film twice a week, or not twice. No, <laughs> no. That's a lot more than we need to film, Sharon. <laughs> Every two weeks. But Becky had the week off last week for her vacation. Did. So she's well rested and hopefully. Yes, mostly. I mean, <laughs> you hiked a lot, so maybe not. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm just tired from my workout this morning. So <laughs> bear with me. I have my coffee in my very old yarn snob mug from Shelly Cam. Picked this up at Vogue Knitting 2019, I think. I think so. <clears throat> I think that was my first year. Okay, so let's get started, not with what I have in my lap, with finished objects. So, Oops. if you recall, last episode I pretty sure I said it on the podcast if not alive but I'm pretty sure it was the podcast that my goal before the Stephen West cast on was to finish the fiery foliage shawl and or my test knit want to take a bet which got finished not the test knit uh, <laughs> the test knit is basically done for what the test knit needed with the sleeve and everything. But I have no mojo to knit on that thing right now. Literally every time I knit on it, my blood pressure goes up. Or I guess my heart rate goes up because I have like Apple Watch and I don't have it on my little whoop strap. And it's like, your heart rate has increased. I'm like, because I just want to be done with it. So it's in a little bit of a timeout. It's been in timeout this whole week, I guess really last week and this week. And then I'm thinking next week I'll just set a timer and knit for like an hour on it and just kind of bust it out that way. Sometimes, okay, because this is going to go into a rabbit trail, but because sometimes I'm very much a process knitter in some aspects, I get bored with the project as it nears its finish. In other projects, I am very much a project knitter. So if you're not familiar with those two terms, a process, process, yes, my accent's slipping out, a process knitter, can't not say it, um, is one that enjoys the knitting process more so than the finished item. So if you get tired of it, you don't really have that motivation to finish the garment, the piece, whatever, if you're tired of knitting on that thing. I get that way a lot, especially when it comes to stocking it in the round for 10 and a half inches or whatever the pattern calls for when it's, when there's not something keeping my attention. It can be as simple as striping, sometimes even ribbing, but something to keep me motivated. Unless I really want to see or use or wear the finished item. And that's definitely the case with my fiery foliage. I kept wanting to go and see the next color transition. Yeah. Um, that was, I'll say my winter's beach cardi was very much both project and process. It was process because I love all the cables, but project because I really want to be able to wear it this fall. And of course I whip that out. Same with even the Marseille, even though that was a boring knit, if you will, for me, because it was just stocking up with a few stripes. It was still, I wanted that finished item a heck of a lot. And I really enjoyed the yarn. So now that we're done with that rabbit trail, let me show you my fiery foliage. Now, I have not woven in my ends yet. And all I have done so far is steam it. I'm kind of going back and forth if I'm going to fully wet block it or not. 
I kind of like the ripply texture and the three-dimensionality of the leaves right now, but at the same time, I also kind of want a smooth shawl, so I don't know yet. So it's not gonna fit all on no, screen. No, it's huge. Ta-da! Ta-da! So this is the fiery foliage, and I even knit one repeat less in the pattern. So it's a massive shawl. So again, Fiery Foliage by Stephen West. This is Poppy by Hedgehog Fibers, going into Fool's Gold by Hedgehog Fibers, fading into the um, Planting Seeds by Clorindrod, then going into Nest by Ching Fibers, and then um, Sky on Fire by Red Stag Fiber. And then I was getting really low with my Sky on Fire because I technically knit both of these sections shorter and I faded faster so I because I really wanted to have a lot of this I wanted to maximize it so I did a few final stripes of passport I think if I had just stuck with the sky on fire I probably would have had enough excluding the I cord cast off so I'm fine with it just being a few rows of that dark burgundy stripe I feel like it kind of finishes it especially with the nice dark so it is a triangular shape so it gets longer but you only ever have well I didn't even have quite this many but I think if you do all the pattern repeats you have 350 some odd stitches it's not too or bad or 375 something like that um, so I had like 20 short of that <clears throat> and uh, yeah like I said the the lace patterns vary easy and pretty memorizable. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really did. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Oh, I did go down in needle size because I always do that with Stephen West. Um, Stephen actually even knits a little bit looser than I do. And so the pattern called for a size four. I went ahead and did a size three, I guess no. I knit looser than Steven if I go down in needle size. Right? Yes. Yes. That means that. I knit looser than Steven. That's what it is. So I go down in needle size. I haven't had enough coffee today. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I went down and I did that on a size 3, US 3 needle. Uh, my gauge is pretty much the exact same as the pattern called for with a size 4. Oh, excuse me. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of tired. So that's that's all I've got there. Do you have a? You don't have a. I have like very few things to share with y'all, because I keep I I finished two objects, both of which are not released yet. So, and I can't show them yet. <laughs> Next episode, next she will episode, have all the things. Well, next episode, I'll have one of them. The oh, other one is still not up, really. No, it gets to hang out inside of its little bag until after the holidays. Oh, it's an advent. Oh, it's an yeah. advent kit pattern. So, gotcha. I can't. Yeah, but I love it. I love them both. I'm <laughs> kind of obsessed. Yes. I basically I was a monogamous knitter on both of these like for a while. Um. And that's why I have, like, nothing. That's okay. We do have one other finished object, not knit by any of us. Um, this was knit by one of our customers, uh, Christina Kerchief, for us. And this is the Lone Star Wrap by, um, oh gosh. It's in the Texas issue of Nomadic Knits, which we have restocked. Um, Antonia Cavallari. Um, is the gal who wrote this pattern. And so this is a pattern using Red Stag Fiber Estate Erin. And it's a really pretty rectangular wrap. I-cord edge, some color work, um, some lace, some stripes, three colors. This is mm -hmm. Passport, Stonegate, and Antique Linen. But you can do any three colors, really. Yeah. Um, we have kits in the original colorways if you are interested still have a couple of those kits left and um, if you want your own colors 
then we can definitely help you pick it out. I believe you need two, two, and three, or two, three, and three of the colors. Yeah, I think check. it's three, three, two. I think yeah. the Stone Gate colorway, you only need two of them. Yes, color A is your shortest, which was uh, Stone Gate. So, yes, two skeins of your color A, which in this case was the gray, which is really just used on those outer corners and a couple stripes. And then your color B and C will need three skeins of each if you use the Estate Aaron. Of course, if you want it a little more rustic, you could use the West Yorkshire Spinner Croft. Um, if you wanted it smaller, if you did not want it as large, uh, go down to Estate DK and go down a needle size. It's a real quick, or maybe two needle size because I think it's knit on a nine, but real quick option if you want it, if you love it, but you're like, that's just too big. It is, or too heavy. Now it's, I mean, it's Aaron weight, so it's soft and squishy. So it's mm -hmm. not maybe the most practical for Texas, but you know what? Actually, this looks really good. We have it draped on the back of our couch in yeah. the um, sit and stitch area. And this really does make a nice like couch throw yeah, uh, for sure. I could see this being just a really, like a nice thing to like throw on your lap. If mm -hmm. you're gonna just, Maybe sit, have a cup of tea, by the fireplace, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. kind of snuggle up. So, we've hit the time of year where I just want to have a cup of tea in my hand all the time. I mean, I say that, and I think that's because <laughs> my vacation brain is still, like, in full gear. Because I was like, oh, yeah, it's like 50s at night there. But did you see the weather? What's coming up for us next week? Oh, or but later it sounds this week? delightful. No, I have not. <laughs> 48 for a low. Uh, it's it's still sweater my weather. Heart. Yay. Now, it still gets up into the like upper 70s, which I'm fine with. Yep. And Good it's that. sunny even. It's not even rainy, which. Good with that, too. I like that. Um, yeah. yeah excellent. So. Stay tuned if you watch our Instagram, Facebook, which Facebook, I'm sorry, has been giving me fits since the whole outage to Maflachi. And like every other post, it cancels on Facebook. So if you're not following us on, on Instagram, I highly recommend that you do. It's the modern mm -hmm. skein, the modern skein, because that is working. Um, you can also set it to, on your Instagram, you can set it to receive notifications when we go live. If you want to get those notifications, it would also, you can, I think you can do when we do go live and or when we do a new post. So if you want to make sure you don't miss something, because on Instagram and Facebook, but for sure on Instagram, that's when we post updates to sit and stitch times class sched uh, not really class schedules that's more the website um, special events if we are having an extended hour or if you know something were to happen and we had to close early that's where you can stay the most up to date because there's usually several posts I would say at least one post a day sometimes two to three just depending on if we get new yarn in you know new fun things so moving on to, this is a very much out of order podcast, I feel. <laughs> uh, so I apologize for that. But moving on to works in progress. And now I am going to say, spoiler alert, if you don't want to see Stephen West's mystery knit along stuff, turn it off or pause it, cover your screen probably for five, ten minutes. I would say because Becky's going to show hers I'm going to show you mine we're going to chat a little bit about it so if you don't want to be spoiled if somehow you have remained unspoiled by Which not is a feat. yes I because commend you it is all over Instagram I'm sure it's all over Facebook it's on Ravelry but if you have yet to be surprised with it avert your eyes now why don't you share yours since you are Having it, and I will dig mine out because mine's at the bottom. 
<laughs> so I was delayed in my cast on. I ended up not taking this with me on my trip. Um, mostly because I still had three skeins that were not wound and I of course le left packing until the last night before I left. So, uh, yeah, long story short, I did not bring this with me, so I cast this on yesterday. Um, so I'm not nearly as far along as other folks are, but this is it so far. Your little wedge. I have one wedge. I'm not, like, getting ready to start the second wedge. But I love it. Yes. So then we have mine. So I cast on when the pattern dropped well not when the pattern dropped i was <laughs> technically i was getting dressed after crossfit so i cast on in the shop that morning after deciding what um, my color order was so i have finished clue one Ta-da! So I will go over my color choices here in just a second but i'm loving these kind of subtle moody blue palette that's going on so for me my color a which is my pop color i'm calling it my anti-pop color because it's gray but with everything else pretty much being blue i feel like it's kind of a pop so mine is gray or that's my color a then color b is the navy blue which you see right now predominantly with the wedges then color C is... I'm just throwing yarn at me. Yeah, apparently. you are. You're throwing yarn at me. <laughs> uh, this one. Uh, then color... This is color D. And last speckle is color E. So, let me get these in order. I can't really hold them all. Ta-da! So, A, B, C, D, E. And then, as far as my colors go, <laughs> I will get you your. And this drops. is my color A <laughs> that I threw at Sharon's feet. Um, that bright, bright yellow. Color B is that peachy color. Love it. C is kind of this blue with some green speckles in there. I went for the speckles. Um, D. Another, there's a lot of speckling happening in this one. But it's also a similar tone. So yes. from a distance, it does not read super mm -hmm. speckled, yeah. which I think was kind of the point with all of his stuff is you didn't want fades that just totally melted into each other with the speckling. And if you did have something, don't make it so variegated where it's going to be like, how many colors did she actually use? Yeah. You know? And then nice. E is like real deep, 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 dark teal. Navy. Like an almost black. Yes. Very nice. So it's all together. It's a very pretty palette. So yay. I feel like we both picked palettes that are pretty on par with our <laughs> color selections. <laughs> yes. Yes. So um, let's see. What else have I worked on? Oh, I did work on, and I even did a post on it. Okay, so my, you know, my big hefty tote of all my projects. <laughs> yeah, it flipped over in the car. Not my car. My car did not flip over. I took a turn a little fast. It's a little top heavy and everything spilled out of my hefty yep. tote. I did not have my hefty tote buckled in, which apparently I need to do. Yep. Um, so everything has kind of gotten all mishmashed together everywhere. And then throw in the fact that Duncan decided last night... I had a new yarn in my bucket, and he was like, oh, yes, must eat this. And basically, I feel like we need yeah. to, like, take some scrap yarn, like, <laughs> and, like, felt it into a tiny little cat toy, because I think he would lose his mind. He and would. then you could, like, just be like, no, play with that. Play with that. <laughs> exactly. And it would still have the little sheepy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Say that. And there's actually a very sweet customer who may or may not watch my podcast who at one point brought me back a little souvenir sheep made out of sheep's wool, like felted, like mm -hmm. this big, like a little ball. 
which I keep proudly on my little, on top of my yarn stash. Yeah. And it's felt it into like a little baby sheep. It's so super cute. Well, one time Duncan decided he liked it <laughs> and started just did. like of course he did. batting it all around. So I have rescued it from him and now it's in a spot where he cannot. But he just thought he had died and gone to heaven with that little sheep's toy. Okay, so then this is my ball tan love. sweater by Caitlin love, love, Hunter. Love. So I have split for sleeves. I have done the back um, part and now I'm working on the front section. And with this pattern, you have to separate and knit flat so many inches for the back, so many inches for the front and then rejoin because it's kind of a bat wing style. You can see. So all of my color work has been completed and now it's onto the mindless knit one row, purl one row. Um, so this is kind of my project where it's either I need some mindless knitting, like it's too dark to knit, whatever it is I'm working on, or if I don't knit on it, then Mondays is kind of my, I've started a new thing, where Mondays is my day to knit at least 30 minutes on something that I haven't worked on in a while. It's a good plan. Now that did not work with my test knit, clearly but I did let me finish the back on this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing there. Um, I'm also gonna try and incorporate like 30 minutes on Monday to do that, and either 30 minutes on Sunday or maybe Monday as well. And sometimes this will bleed over into longer time periods, but 30 minutes to work on my Sarah Nordland, which I really love, but because of the chart, and the, ch the chart, it's not one that I can memorize yet. I haven't memorized it yet. I'm only yeah. worked through like three repeats of the chart. I'm close to having it memorized, but because you're doing lace work on the wrong side as well, that's what's kind of throwing me off. So I've got to sit there and like highlighter tape every row. So it's not something I can work on here at the shop at all or at night because I need light and... Yeah quiet and no disturbing and then I may have cast on something last <laughs> night but in all fairness we have an announcement if you were looking at Instagram yesterday you saw this announcement so exactly. just act surprised yes <laughs> we are now officially official Brooklyn Tweed Stockists Yay! So this has really been almost a year in the making. Um, you may remember last November we were accepted and um, we applied and were accepted to host a pop-up shop for Brooklyn Tweed, which is kind of their first steps into seeing if you can become a stockist of theirs. Um, you go through some questionnaires and all sorts of stuff and they make sure that you're a a good shop, if you will, to carry their yarn. And we are so happy and pleased that we were asked, um, actually last month or yeah, I guess it was last month yeah. to um, be an official stockist. So super exciting. And our first order is um, that we've brought into the shop has been the shelter, um, which is the American Targi and Columbia wool in a worsted weight. Um, which is also, uh, I believe, wool and spun. And then Arbor, which is the 100% American Targi wool. And that is a wool and spun, or worsted spun. Worsted spun. The shelter is a wool and spun. Yes. It's a worsted weight wool and spun. <laughs> and the Arbor is a DK weight worsted spun. Yes. So the, if you're like that, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It has to do with the the way that it's plied and twisted and spun into the yarn. So the shelter is more of a, if you've never used it before, it's extremely soft, but it still has a bit of a more rustic feel. If you've ever used Harrisville Designs Nightshades, if you've ever used maybe the Biche and Bouche, um, like Gross Lambswool, this is actually softer but still has the texture. It isn't on superwash yarn. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's very light and lofty like very light not just because these are 50 gram skeins right yes these are 50 mm -hmm. gram skeins but it has to do with how the yarn is plied yes. so that being said when you make an entire sweater out of shelter even though it is a worsted weight garment it will be very light in feeling it won't be heavy like a superwash worsted weight it won't feel um you're not going to have like a lot of times with worsted weight especially in the terms of card or worsted weight heavier weights in larger sweater items like cardigans pullovers things like that you once you block them especially wet block them you tend to have quite a bit of growth sometimes up to even four inches yeah. just because of the weight of the actual yarn pulling with this how it's spun and because it's a lighter weight in the fiber itself you don't have nearly that amount of growth if hardly any when you wet block it um, you'll have probably a little bit just as the stitches kind of relax and plump out and everything yeah. but maybe a half inch maybe an inch if it's a very uh, I hate to use the word heavy but voluminous knit if there's a lot of skeins of yarn going into it if there's yeah. maybe a lot of cable work in there you know things like that or if it's just a larger garment in general um hopefully that didn't confuse you guys too much the arbor is going to feel and look more like a traditional superwash DK, yeah. but it's still lighter um, and it is non-superwash, so it def you can spit splice these yarns, which I love spit splicing because you don't have ends to weave in that yep. way. Um, and yeah, this is worse than spun. I could have just read the label. <laughs> you got it uh, right I did get it right Yeah, but yes I could have just read the label anywho um, this is going to look and feel smooth if you will with your finished garments this one will still have that slight rustic look so details shelter is like I said worsted weight it's 140 yards on this 50 grams um, it is a woolen spun it is a two ply and they do recommend a hand wash cold and dry flat, of course, because it is non superwash. It is uh, wool is from Johnson County, Wyoming. It is spun in Harrisville, New Hampshire, and dyed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So that's the really cool part about shelter or about Brooklyn Tweed in general. It's yeah. all American wool. They tell you exactly where everything is from, and they really trust all of their sources and everything like that so it's not like a certified organic wool or anything like that there's a lot involved to get an actually a, like a got certified organic wool but you know that these are coming from small ranchers that take care of their animals that love their animals treat them with respect and do all the proper things and then they're spun up and dyed in small batches usually using local or small artisan spinners and um, dyers that have been dying for you know generations um, so it's just yeah. really cool I love it I love it yeah so shelter and then arbor is 145 yards 50 grams um, worsted spun this is a three ply so it's a nice plump round yarn again hand wash cold dry flat this wool comes from both Montana and South Dakota, and it is spun in Springville, Maine, and dyed, depending on the, um, the dye, either in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or Rutherfordton, North Carolina. So, super cool. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is 100% American Targi, um, which is a breed of sheep. And this is a 100% Targi Columbia, so it's just a crossbred breed of sheep so it combines the Columbia sheep and the Targi um, which gives you two different wool attributes to their wool um, yeah so that's fun so let's show what I cast on last night so yes. you guys know I've recently finished my Marseille in Arbor I also have knit the 
Sonobe. Sonobe. Yes. I'm like, what is the name of that? The Sonobe jacket out of Arbor. So I was like, we don't have a sample in shelter because we've never had shelter. We've got Dapple. We've got um, Ranch, you know, things like that. So this is the start of my Douglas Cardi. So the Douglas Cardi is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And it came out not too long ago. And I guess right after it came out is when we were knowing that we were going to become Brooklyn Tweed Stockists. And one of her test knitters did this sweater, even though it calls for a DK. She did it in the shelter, and I've read through all of her notes and everything. And so I knew that that's what I wanted. So this is the Douglas Cardi. And there's going to be two things that I do slightly different. One, I'm using the shelter, which is technically a worsted weight. I did go down in my needle size because I know that I am a little bit loose knitter. Um, and since using a worsted weight, I just wanted to, I'll say, kind of compensate for that. Um, and the original pattern, you use your main color or color A, which is your band, uh, neck band, your ribbing, things like that. And then you stripe four colors. There's several people who have just done three colors. And I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. So this is my ribbing. I've got, I think, like two more rows left. And this is the colorway cast iron, so black. Then I am going to use this, which is pumice, which is a light gray. Then faded quilt, right? Yes, faded quilt. And then... I've got two here, either almanac, and so then it would be kind of like blue-gray, which I really like. Yeah, I love the pop there. Or if I decided not to do this pop, keep it more neutral and do this kind of brownie thing, which I really like. This one is called... Uh, that's Storm Cloud? Yes, that's Storm Cloud. It's hard because I like both. Because mm -hmm. originally I was going to do all four. Which also could still yeah. be really nice. I'll decide when I get to that stripe. I mean, the benefit of going with the neutral, like taking out the, the bright blue, is that you're going to get a little... It's going to be super wearable. A little with more wear. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think my only hesitation for doing the blue is because my Stephen West is so blue. Yeah, that, I guess it does, bringing in the almanac does make it very, very similar to Stephen. Yeah. Your, with, your with the gray. Along. Yes, yeah. my make-along stuff. So yeah. that that's is my, true. my one hesitation with that. But anyway, that is that. So let's go through all the colors yes. that we have of both Shelter and Harbor. Okay, so we'll start with Cast Iron. Almost black. Mm -hmm. And I think the shelter is fun because all of these have a little bit of like variation in them too. It's not a flat mm -mm. color. It is very much heathered and definitely a little, heathered little bits of fun. Sorry. This no no no, that's great. Cause the arbor is definitely a solid. Yes. And the shelter is definitely more of what you would consider a heathery, almost tweed like. Some yeah. of the colors you could say are tweed-like. Mm -hmm. Others more just heathered. This one's just fun. Yes. This one's called newsprint. And so it is a two-ply. And so one ply is cast iron and one ply is like a, a undyed or a white, um, which is super fun. That would be – I think this would be great for just like a basic beanie style hat. So mm -hmm. let's just say you want to get one skein of shelter and you're kind of unsure what to do. Just get this and do a – basic beanie or a yeah. basic cowl just like something super simple and just let the yarn do all the work that would also be a great thing if you're like i want to tiptoe into non-superwash but i'm not yeah i don't know if i like it just do that it's 13.75 for a skein so this would also be real fun what mind you i don't do it I, I don't know how to brioche yet but like oh yeah like brioching with that would be fun and then you just get yeah. the little pops of it pops mm -hmm. that would be fun well, which should... while i'm holding yeah. it this is almanac yes so that's definitely like a slightly tealy navy blue yeah 
This is the storm cloud. So this is a brown gray combo. Really pretty color. I like that. Mm. This is blanket fort. The name makes me so happy. It is. This one definitely has that tweed esque look with the bits of red and blue in there. This one is definitely kind of a faded pale gray purple combo. Yeah. This is the faded quilt, which is like faded denim, kind of in my opinion. This is the pumice, a light to medium gray. There are a few other colors that are just out of stock right now, so we don't have the entire complement, but we have a pretty good palette. Um, over time, we'll be getting them as they come in, and we will also be expanding to other weights um, as they either become available or as we change seasons. Like, I'm not going to bring in fingering weight right now because it's, we're moving into winter. Anywho, this is sap. This is a really fun one because it's green with just the tiniest flecks of almost a neon, mm -hmm. but it's not. So this would be just a really fun one um, to add as like a pop for a Douglas cardigan or something like that. And then this is Foothills. This is another kind of a mossy sage green on the lighter side, but also pairs really well with gray. This is Button Jar, so a nice rich forest green. Little flecks of teal -y blue mm -hmm. in there, which is really nice. That one I feel like is one of the ones that the more you look at it, the more you can kind of see some of those like almost tweedy pops mm -hmm. of blues and yellows and mm -hmm. there's even... There's even a little brown almost yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really pretty for a sweater. Mm -hmm. This is called Wool Socks, which is just super cute. Um, so this is like a brick kind of um, red. There's some red and yellow bits in there too, but definitely a brick kind of color. Then this is Bale, so a very soft straw yellow. And then this one is Camper. So this is kind of a strawberry, slightly pinky kind of a color, mm -hmm. like a soft red. So those are the colors of Shelter that we have available. Let me move these, and then you want to start on the Arbor. We have a few other colors in Arbor, too. Yes. A few more, I should say. So we have Klimt, which is kind of a nice golden mustard it almost feels like an antique leather glazed pecan mm -hmm. mixed with beautiful gold yeah a little more goldeny than kind of those but very nice here we have fleet it's a really deep beautiful navy mm -hmm. almost black kind of like yes. her majesty's navy if you've seen that one we've got dorado which, which is pretty is gorgeous. Just a deep, deep forest green. Mm -hmm. Super dark and rich. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to take out the tripod. <laughs> uh, Vintner. Beautiful wine red. Mm -hmm. It's like a dark Christmas red. Yes. Very much kind of a nice cranberry. Mm-hmm would be pretty I could do this color yeah yeah Mesa a really nice kind of soft again kind of a nice strawberry pink mm -hmm. I suppose almost peach almost but peach. not really kind of know. salmon yeah but not like it's kind of like peach salmon strawberry all kind of put in a blender that's disgusting yeah that but... sounds real bad <laughs> but <laughs> the color is gorgeous yes I mean, it does. Like, Mesa is accurate. Like, yeah. Desert Mesa. Like yeah. a Sedona. Mm hmm. I was there. Yes. <laughs> I can attest. <laughs> uh, we have Spruce, which is true to its name. A yes. beautiful, nice Christmas tree, Spruce Green. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you like pull together oh. these guys and make some cute, like, Christmas stockings. Or do a Christmas Soldatna. Uh huh. That would be beautiful. We've got 
Sashiko. Hoping I said that correctly. I think so. That's like the indigo kind of blue. Yeah. A nice blue indigo for comparison. I feel like it's showing up real dark. Mm -hmm. This is the fleet. This is the Sashiko. Sashiko. So you can see this one's a smidgen lighter. It's like yeah. two shades lighter. And maybe just the tiniest of teal in yeah. there. Just a, teeny, a little more, tiny. little more that green undertone. Dega. Love that. So that was in, that's my stripe for my Marseille, um, which is just a great neutral. Yes. And she paired that with Burnished. Burnished. So burnished is my main color, and uh, it's yeah, it's definitely kind of like that glazed pecan kind of color. This is so you can see the difference. This is the clumped, and this is the burnished. And mm -hmm. then why don't we hold up? Yeah, we got crumb as well. Crumb. So kind of almost more in that order. So this one is a little bit lighter and more. I don't know, washed out kind of almost. Mm -hmm. This one's more of the brownie coppery, and this is more yellow. Clumped, crumb, burnished. Yeah. And I want to say the crumb is one that we had from the pop-up shop, mm -hmm. and I believe it's discontinued. It's either yes. that or burnished. I think it's crumb, though. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Something like that. Love it, lo love it. Jump in if you know, Sherry. Lovat, lovat, lovat. I don't know. Beautiful teal green. Kind of a almost a smoky. Yes. Smoky teal. Yes. Real pretty. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> Cobbler, which is very much a deep burgundy, you know, think like blackberry, blackberry cobbler. I was just thinking. Like, very yeah. well named there. Yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. Yes. Now I'm hungry. Mm hmm. Got Norway. Really soft gray, but it's got kind of some. Kind of. I feel like when you put it next to, like. See, when it's next to that green or green. No, this is not in green. <laughs> Gray, it pulls almost like sea foam. Yeah. Kind of a color. But then when it's on its own, it's definitely gray. And I feel like especially like when you put it next to some of the blues, yeah. it leans a little bit of like a blue tinge. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a morphing yeah. color. Got Porter, which is an almost black, mm -hmm. almost black brown. Real pretty. Mm -hmm. Avalanche of yarn here. Yes. <laughs> right next to the mic. So you might have heard that a little bit. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, humpback, which is just an interesting color. <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember now, is my Sonobe, it's either Porter or Humpback. And I think it's Porter. I think it's Porter. I think it's a little bit it's, darker uh, than yeah, Humpback than is. Humpback, yeah. So you, you can see... see very slight difference yeah. but I'm Humpback pretty sure it almost did. has like deep like the like dark forest green tinge to it yeah if you put it with that that dark it definitely has a pulls yeah. of green tinge which is really pretty mm -hmm. arabesque I love this color because it's like it's your taupe but it's also beige, yep. but it's also kind of a gray tone. It's another one of those kind of morphing colors. Yes. Goes with a lot of things. It'd be really pretty with Mesa, actually. Oh, yes. This would be a really pretty mm -hmm. three color. No, not uh, wrong thing. Moonwake cowl. Ooh, throw one more in and you have a Moonwake. There you go. Is it that would be a gorgeous. There's but Moonwake and, by Andrea Mowry. Yes. And I think that one was, I think it's technically a worsted pattern. So you yes. can do that out of so shelter. You could do it out of shelter. I did mine out of DK when yeah. I did that. Definitely convertible. So, yeah. And then last one, Heron. Another kind of blue undertoning, blue leaning gray. gray. Yep. And that's 
it. Yay. So, like I said, we will be officially now stalking Brooklyn Tweed. Um, that being said, I have asked and we should be able to do some special orders. Um, not like all the time, but like a, we can gather them up and submit a special order. Um, so if you are wanting, let's just say, for example, there's a pattern you desperately want to knit and it's out of either shelter in a different color that we don't have currently, or maybe it's in loft in, yeah. and we don't have loft yet. You can still let us know. We can contact them and see what, if a, it, that yarn and, um, color is in stock and if not when would it be and then kind of give you an update on that and then we can do a couple of special orders um so we'll do that kind of like a more of a once a month once every other month sort of deal so like i said if you are looking for something we'll either put it on our next order if we can if it's available or do a little special order um we have sweater quantities of most everything if there is something that you're needing maybe extra for, for a larger size, or you just need more yarn for whatever reason, for let's just say you're doing a giant blanket or something, yeah. um, obviously let us know. And we can, again, as long as the color's in stock, we can special order that as well. Yeah, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I think that's about it yeah we kind of did a long episode yeah um lots of lots of fun new yarn and colors yes. to talk about. so definitely thanks for tuning in uh if you are participating in Stephen west mystery knit along and you are local don't forget we're having our cast on not cast on we've already cast on <laughs> our uh pattern release knit along days um Saturday mornings and then we're also doing Fridays afternoons too so maybe you can't come on Saturday but you can come on Friday afternoons come yeah. just come hang out with us um, we have our Thursday late night knit or crochet because um, we actually have several people who are coming who are crocheting yep. and a couple loom knitters as well um, and come people start arriving now about 3 30 4 o'clock we usually bust out the snacks and drinks about five ish yep. and uh, we're open till eight so come join us for sure um, and of course we're open tuesday through saturday and 24 hours online so you can always order online for sure i think that's about it so thanks so much for tuning in and we will chat with you in two weeks on youtube yes. or you can watch us live on instagram lives on tuesdays and fridays at 9 a.m central time Woo -hoo -hoo. bye guys have a great day